What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex and this is Ask the Cheese Gaming. And in this video, it's finally come time. I've decided to break my silence and address the woke SJW agenda at Netherrealm Studios and in Mortal Kombat 11. No idea what I mean? I'll explain. Three quick notes before I begin. First, I will not be featuring any Mortal Kombat 11 gameplay in this video because Netherrealm Studios has been notorious for copyright claiming videos on YouTube that are critical of them. Second, I will not be addressing Aftermath, though, if it's requested down in the comments or if people want to see it, I may talk about it at a later time. And lastly, this video is not a review of Mortal Kombat 11, though I may still do, do one at a later time. So, with that out of the way, let's begin. First, let's talk about the gender swap characters in Mortal Kombat 11. No idea what I'm talking about? I'll explain. Jackie and Cassie are gender swaps of legacy characters Jax and Johnny Cage. These two characters are in Mortal Kombat 11, but is a coincidence that Takeda and Kung Jin, who arguably were more popular from MKX, are not? I think not. Let's actually take this gender swap theory a step further and look at the big bad of Mortal Kombat 11, Kronika. In an IGN interview, which you can find on YouTube for yourself if you'd like. It's called 166 Questions with Ed Boon, and it was poor, posted on April 14th of 2019. Ed Boon was asked about the female Big Bad of Mortal Kombat 11. He explained that during the development period, originally Chronica was called Chronico, but the developers decided that they wanted to make a new female Big Bad. So... They took the previous big bads of the game, being Sh Shao Kahn or Shinnok, gender swapped it, and instead made her the most powerful being that ever existed. Kronika's the Keeper of Time, more like destroyer of all canon and lore that's ever existed in the Mortal Kombat universe. Do not get me wrong, I have absolutely no problem with a female antagonist or protagonist. In fact, Super Metroid and Bayonetta which are two of my favorite games, by the way, and both amazing games, have both of these things. Now, I just talked about Shao Kahn. Let's look at him and Katana. Shao Kahn's battle with Katana, where he's easily defeated and killed, makes absolutely no sense. Let's just think for a second at Shao Kahn's accomplishments in the Midway continuity and timeline. He trained under Onaga, and was Onaga's general, learning the dark arts and magic from him, before he eventually poisoned and assassinated Onaga. He then became Khan of Outworld, began conquering realms such as Zatara, Vraternus, and the most notable, of course, is Adenia. He forced the Shokans and the Centaurs to ally. He lost to Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat 2, was supposedly killed, lived. He created Ermac, using the souls of the warriors that he defeated. Stole large portions of the souls of people of Earthrealm. Lost to Liu Kang again. Lived. Then, later on in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, he was supposedly killed during a coup d'etat by Quan Chi and Shang Tsung, the Deadly Alliance. He lived. Then... He returns at the end of Mortal Kombat Deception and in the final battle at the Pyramid of Argus in Mortal Kombat 11, or, no, excuse me, not Mortal Kombat 11, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, he defeated half of the Mortal Kombat roster to climb the period of Argus and absorbs Blaze power before defeating Raiden at the top or tip of the Pyramid of Argus, forcing Raiden to send a message to his past self and reset the timeline. In the new timeline, much of his past was exactly the same. Except in Mortal Kombat 2, he had a hole punched through his chest at the end fight of Mortal Kombat 2. He lived. He then, in Mortal Kombat 3 when he evaded Earthrealm, he defeated Raiden, and it took Raiden, being supercharged by all the Elder Gods, to banish Shao Kahn to never be seen again. But... Now let's look for a second at Katana's achievements. She's been able to save her mother, 
join forces with Earthrealm. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Is this a coincidence? I think not. Is it also a coincidence that with the patches, balance patches they claim, from Mortal Kombat 11, that Katana keeps getting buff after buff after buff, yet Shao Kahn, who has been bottom tier since the launch of the game, has barely received any, and yet he's been in dire need of any? You decide. Next, I want to touch briefly on Kotal and Jade and the Mortal Kombat 11 story. Jade saves Kotal Khan, who was the Khan of Outworld and quelled a civil war during the vengeance of MKX, not once, not twice, but three times, arguably even four. Kotal Khan got totally shafted. Now in a vacuum, all these things don't really look like much, but I assure you, dear viewer, it gets even better. The next big point I'm going to make just even further shows the agenda in Mortal Kombat 11. During the development of Mortal Kombat 11, the developers decided that they wanted to censor the entire female cast. No idea what I mean? All the Mortal Kombat 11 female characters are all covered up. All of their classic or old skins are all gone. Now I understand skins will change with time and characters will grow and everything else. I have no issue with that. But when asked about this and why all the female combatants were completely covered up, they said, first off, they wanted to make the game more mature. Let's just talk about this point for a second. In a game where you can uppercut someone's head off, pull out their skeleton, or otherwise eviscerate them in many gl glorified and gory ways, this just makes no sense. Second, they claimed that women wouldn't fight like this. Women wouldn't fight like this. Have they not talk to Ronda Rousey who fight, fought in UFC and currently fights in WWE? Have they seen some of the attire she wrestles in? This just makes no sense. But to take it a step further, the majority of the male cast, such as Kotal, Liu Kang, Jax, Iris, Baraka, Johnny Cage, and Kotal are all half-dressed. So the men are still fully revealed, but the women are not. I'm not saying we need to have scantily clad outfits like we had in Mortal Kombat 9 or have female combatants with J cups like in Mortal Kombat 9, but I'd like it to be a bit more fair and not just in a blatant appeal to the woke SJW Twitter mob, because that's exactly all this is. The developers are trying to appeal to a small group of people who more than likely didn't buy and still haven't bought the game. I mean, at least just don't lie about it. Now, let's next talk about Jax. Since we just addressed him for a moment. In Jax's ending of Mortal Kombat 11... He erases slavery from Africa and, is, in essence, creates Wakanda. He even states in his ending, quote, I'm not waiting centuries for people to get woke when I got the power to make the change now. Jax has always been a military soldier. He created the Special Forces and the Outer World Investigation Agency. He's always been a fighter, he's always been a soldier. But in this, they completely destroy his character and say, Oh, sorry, he doesn't care about America or he doesn't care about any of that. He just wants people to get woke and he's going to completely erase the timeline and erase history. This just makes absolutely no sense. Lastly, let's address some of the character dialogues in Mortal Kombat 11. Many of these dialogues, there's veiled barbs at... The current president of the United States, Donald Trump, as well as barbs against men or women. I'll just cherry pick a few real quick and talk about them to be specific. The first one I want to talk about is between Shao Kahn and Collector. Shao Kahn, for 25 years you've remained loyal. 
Collector, you are the one true Khan. Shao Khan, let's make Outworld great again. Next bit of dialogue is between Frost and Noob Saibot. Frost, you should have been Grandmaster. Noob Saibot, I would not allow female combatants in the Lin Kuei. Frost, you are worse than Kwai Liang. Next bit of dialogue is Shiva Mirror. Kitaro, Goro, did they live? Still Shiva, in my timeline, they have both died. Other Shiva, I knew they were the weaker link. And the last bit I'll leave you with uh, for dialogues is, Shao, is Shiva talking to Kano. And this one just makes me cringe every time I hear it. Men are inherently the weaker sex. Kano, afraid you got that backwards. Shiva, do you have the strength to bear children? What the heck is with this dialogue? I mean, this is just sad. Just absolutely sad. So maybe now, dear viewer, you're asking yourself, Hey, cheese, why does any of this matter? Why do you care? Well, for me personally, I've been a fan of Mortal Kombat 11, or Mortal Kombat games specifically, all my life. I grew up playing Mortal Kombat 1 for the Super NES. Then I had Mortal Kombat 2 still for the Super NES. And I actually had Mortal Kombat 3 on the Game Boy. I played Mortal Kombat 4 on the original arcade every chance I had. And I've either played or owned every single Mortal Kombat game that's ever come out. And it saddens me because more the Mortal Kombat franchise, more specifically Midway and MK1, used to buck the trend and go against whatever was happening. Despite the fact that the government tried time and time again to censorship, censorship and censor them, they bucked the trend. Mortal Kombat 1 is the reason that the ESRB rating actually even exists. And it just breaks my heart to see that this is what ha has happened to my beloved franchise. Instead, it's filled with politics and woke SJW agenda. If you think this is going to get any better, it's not. Why is it that a month after the game came out, I heard person after person in live chat and on forum and everything else looking forward to, oh, Injustice 3 or Mortal Kombat 12? Because the game is flawed, it's filled with agenda, and it's filled with politics. And I don't know about you, but I don't want either of these things in the games that I play. I play video games to escape all that. Not be told how men are inherently the weaker sex, or be told how we need to make Outworld great again. Do you agree with what I said here? If, if so, be sure to leave me a comment down below. Do you disagree? Then hey, I thank you greatly for watching, and feel free to tell me how I'm a monkey's uncle and I should go bury my head in the sand. If you want, I can make a part two to this, explaining more about why I think that all of this matters, but for this video, I believe that I've prattled on long enough. Everyone stay safe. I thank you all so much for listening and enjoy, and I'll see you in the next review or video. Thanks, everyone. See you again.